Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. We're going through our EKG coding reference guide and we have now made our way through normal EKGs, the general features, atrial abnormalities in part one. We looked at sinus rhythms, atrial rhythms, junctional rhythms, ventricular rhythms in part two. And now we're in part three where we looked at first degree AV block and in this lecture we will look at second degree AV block specifically type 1, Mobitz type 1, or Winkybach. Now, if you don't have access to the coding reference guide, you can do it simply by putting this link into your search bar, enter your email address, click submit, you'll get an email, and then you'll get a link that you have to click on to get access, and then you'll be coming here, okay? So we'll be continuously updating that, adding new topics, uh, but it's already quite comprehensive at this point with examples, all right? So now we're just going through some videos to make sure we understand. Now, if you're returning, all you have to do is put your email in, submit, and you'll bypass that uh, initial setup. So if you're interested in our website with more books, resources, go to www.ekg.md, where we're always putting out new research, new things that we're doing, okay? And you can look at our EKG course that's available there. So let's get started. So second degree AV block Mobitz type one, what is going on here? So it's also known as Winkybach, you may have heard it. And this is where we have progressive PR interval lengthening with intermittent dropped beats. So with type or the first degree AV block, we saw no dropped beats. We saw constant prolonged PR interval, no drop beats. Here we're starting to see drop beats. And what we're saying is that the PR interval, remember just to review, this is our P wave, our QRS complex, and our T wave. The PR interval is from the beginning of our P wave to the next one, okay? And this is our PR interval. And what we're saying is that PR interval is slowly getting longer. So if you imagine the first PR interval is that, the next PR interval is this, okay? The one that follows it maybe looks like this. And then eventually, there's no beat that follows it. Okay, and then the next beat that comes after is back to our first beat. Okay, so notice that the PR interval lengthens. This is the baseline. It gets longer, longer, longer. Okay, and it drops there. All right. Now it always it doesn't always have to follow that pattern. But one clue that you could tell that this is Mobus type one is if you look where there was expected to be a beat. Okay, so we expected one here. Look at the beat that it would be after it, which would we, we would say would be this one, okay? And notice that the PR interval here is shorter than the one that precedes the drop beat, which would be this one here, okay? So notice that this PR interval after it is shorter than the one that precedes the drop beat, okay? That's a clue to tell you that this is Mobitz type one. Now, one way people remember it, when I was initially learning it, was longer, longer, longer drop. That's a sign of Winkybach, okay, or second degree AV uh, type 1. Now, so what's going on is what's getting longer is that PR interval slowly gets longer, and then you have a dropped beat, and that's Winkybach, okay? Now, you don't always have to have three PR intervals that get longer. It could be longer, longer, and drop, but that's just one way to remember it, okay? So this is a reversible conduction block that occurs at the AV nodal crest or the a atria AV nodal junction, okay? So what you can imagine, and if we draw our heart out here, so this is our box diagram, our right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. And then we have our conduction system, our sinus node up here, our AV, our intraatrial internodal pathways to our AV node. So this is our AV node. This is our sinus node. We may have a Bachmann bundle coming to the left atrium. We have a His bundle, a right bundle branch here, a left bundle branch that subdivides into our anterior and posterior fascicle, left anterior and a left posterior fascicle. Okay, and what we're saying is that you have slow conduction, or, or you may have a initial normal conduction. Okay, so conduction flows normally, but then maybe afterwards, the next one, you have maybe a small block. 
okay? And that's what lengthens the PR interval. And then the next beat that comes, maybe there's even a bigger block, so make a, maybe even a thicker line, okay? And that's prolonging the interval. And when you, the next beat may have an even longer block that almost makes it complete, and that's why no beat can get through, and that's why it's dropped, okay? And so pretty much no ventricular depolarization occurs here, okay? So this is malfunctioning of AV nodal cells. They progressively fatigue, you can think of it, until they finally fail to conduct an impulse, okay? And this can be from an injured AV node with long refractory period, okay? Eventually just gets tired out and just does not conduct through, and that's why we have that drop beat. But eventually, because there was so much time during this time, okay, it's ready for the next beat, and that's why it goes back to that short PR interval. Now, what causes this? You can have an increase in vagal tone, so athletes may see this, an inferior MI, so remember the RCA, the right coronary artery, tends to supply the inferior portion of the heart, and the RCA also tends to supply that AV node, okay? So sometimes if you damage that or have an occlusion there, you may this may result in it. Myocarditis, Lyme disease tends to have, uh, you know, impact that AV node, and you may see progressive different AV blocks. Mitral valve repair, okay, it can actually damage this. Uh, medications can affect the AV node, so beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, digoxin, amiodarone, and so forth. So what is the clinical significance? Well, this is often benign, and there may be minimal hemodynamic instability, but this is, tends to be a low risk of progressing to third degree or complete heart block, okay? So if patients are asymptomatic, we tend to, you know, not treat them, okay? No treatment is generally required for them. If they're symptomatic, you know, rarely do we have to, you know, require permanent pacing, but that's sometimes a thing we do, or atropine may work, okay? So let's look at this example here just to ensure we know what we're seeing. So notice that we have, the, these are P waves, okay? And then there's a drop B. So let's start right here, okay? Starting right here, notice you have this P wave here, okay, with that PR interval. So again, I'll just erase that. So notice this PR interval, Notice the one after it gets longer, this one gets even longer, and then you have this P wave and a dropped beat, okay? But notice what follows it. This PR interval here is shorter than this one here, okay? And that is a clue that you're dealing with uh, this second degree AV block mobile type 1, okay? So again, here's that longer, 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 Dropped B is a sign of Winky Bach, okay? And again, what follows this, here's that PR interval, almost like back to baseline, then it gets longer again, and then in this case, you have a drop B, okay? So it fatigues even, even earlier, so you don't always have to have it. You can have it look like there is these grouped beats because you pretty much have a few beats in a row and then a drop beat, so maybe these look like they're grouped together, okay? Uh, or even these, and then you have the ones that follow. These ones look like they're grouped together and so forth. So that's what we mean by this group beating, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. These are the main things. So you have progressive PR interval lengthening with intermittent dropped beats. Remember to look after the drop beat and bef be uh, before it, okay? So again, we said our dropped beat occurred here. So look at the PR interval after it which would be this one, and notice that it's shorter than the one that precedes it, okay? And that's a clue that you're dealing with this. Again, this it tends to be reversible conduction block at that AV nodal crest or the atrial AV junction, okay? You have progressive fatiguing of these AV nodal cells and malfunctioning until they fail to conduct an impulse, and that's where that drop beat comes uh, about, okay? Again, you, the clinical significance, this is often benign with often minimal hemodynamic instability. There's a lower risk uh, of progressing to sec or third degree or complete heart block. We'll see with Mobitz type 2 that there's a greater risk, and that tends to be something that we want to manage more earlier on, okay? So again, most patients, it's typically benign, but we can see this. So again, progressive prolongation of the PR interval until a P wave is blocked and there's no conduction to the ventricles, therefore no QRS complex that you see, all right? Remember, longer, longer, longer drop, that's a sign of Winky Bach. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. 
Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos, and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um, i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference okay this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows uh, and this is really nice it has every code as you saw earlier laid out there very small pocket guide available I had help with uh, my colleague Dr. Peter Noseworthy who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic and editing it so this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful so go to the ekg course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning ekgs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that i don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material so uh, we don't really make much off it it's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care that's why we do this and we love doing it so thank you so much for your support um, if you have any questions just leave them below and we're happy to answer them all right have a great day